So yeah, welcome again to um, everyone who's attending our service through Zoom this morning, or you might be catching up with us um, on YouTube. And one thing that the, this pandemic has taught us, I think, isn't it, that not to take some simple things or the basic things for granted, such as being together where and when we want. But we know when we worship, when we gather together to worship, we're united as brothers and sisters by God's presence living in us. So I'll just start with a, a short prayer to bring us into that place of uh, acknowledging God's presence. So yeah, thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are here meeting with each of us this morning. Help us just to focus on you. And we just give you anything that's on our heart and mind that's gonna distract us from spending this precious time in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So if you can go on to the next slide, Natasha. So as we focus on this precious time of worship together, we say our opening greeting. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So God sees um, all we do and knows our circumstances. Nothing can be hidden from him, but Jesus still says, come, come to me. He doesn't say, come back when you're a little bit more holy. So let's come to him now to ask for his forgiveness and peace. Our confession um, prayer is based on a number of different Psalms. Search us, O God, and know our hearts. Test us and know our anxious thoughts. Point out anything in us that offends you and guide us on the road to life. Thank you, Natasha. So we can say together, O oh Lord, you have examined our hearts and know everything about us. You know when we sit down or stand up. You know our thoughts from afar. You see when we walk or lie down. You know every detail of our conduct. You even know what we are going to say before we say it. Such knowledge is too wonderful for us, too great for us to understand. Cleanse us from hidden faults. Keep us from deliberate sins. Don't let them control us. Then we will be free of guilt and innocent of serious wrongdoing. Having made our confession to God, our loving, gracious Father, his, these words from Psalm 91 remind us of his faithfulness to each one of us. Listen to the promise of God. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honour them and show them my saving power. So let us rejoice and sing praise to God of Jesus. Oh, sorry, let, let's say this all together. Lord, we trust in your unfailing love. We rejoice because you have rescued us. Sing praise to God because he has been so good to us. So now we're going to sing our praise and worship for all that Jesus has done for us, for his amazing grace and his unfailing love. Thank you, Gary.
Morning, everybody. Morning. Just a quickie. Yesterday, I woke up and there was an envelope through me door, and someone had left me something. They didn't put a name, but they said, "God bless." I know it was one of you lot. So, <laughs> yeah. thank you so much. That was really, really kind of you to, me to do that. But thank you. <laughs> Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above our King. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless? In our own wonder, the King of glory, the King above our King. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your life. But I would be set free. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the author a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory. Who moves the nation with truth and justness Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance The King of glory, the King above our kings This is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place that you would bear my cross You laid down your life But I would be set free Jesus, I say, for all that you've done for me Worthy is the Lamb Worthy is the Lamb who slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Love is the Lamb's name. Oh, worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb's name. Oh, worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb's name. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your life. But I would be set free. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, we praise you, God, for everything that you've done for us and everything that you provide for us. It's all from you. So, John, you're not going to... um. Please, uh, if you can unmute yourself and lead us in our prayers. Thank you. Yeah. We come together to pray for the world, to thank our God, and to pray for ourselves. Gracious Father, Revive your church in our day and make her holy, strong and faithful for your glory's sake in Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray that we continue to find new ways to, to be in church for these unusual days 
staying connected with you and with one another. We thank you that you're still with us every day. Lord, we bring before you our local partners in Christ. Today, we bring before you healing rooms. Not just in Harlow, but nationally. We particularly bring before you Harlow's branch and pray that their meetings, even online, bring you to people who need you. Lord, we bring you before you the state of the world and we think particularly of those organisations that, that bring your love to others, like Christian Aid. We pray for them that they can bring people free from poverty and connected with this particularly, we pray for all of those affected in Beirut this week by the massive explosion. We pray for the families, those who have been injured, those who have been killed and those who are homeless. Lord have mercy. Pray in this country for those areas who are needing local lockdowns and have more difficulties than others. We pray, pray for our, our leaders that they will make wise decisions for the benefit of the, of the country as a whole. In our local, in our, our own church, we pray for the work with the youth, particularly the, G, the Jesus group. We thank, oh, we thank you for the, the work that we're doing with, with the young children and, and ask for guidance for the, for the leaders of the group to, to hear, to, to do this in, in the current circumstances. And we pray for our church family. We pray for those who are self isolating, those who are sick and the bereaved. Lord Jesus Christ, who cured the sick and the lame and raised the lowly, reach out for this time of prayer to all those on our hearts into their minds, their bodies and their spirits and heal them of all that harms. Touch their lives and ours with your healing power. Oh, we remember some words of yours. Greater love has no one than that he lays down his life for his friends. Please show us how each of us is best called to do that today and finally we have the Lord's Prayer our Father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us today your daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hazel, you'll need to unmute yourself. Yeah, I have done. Mm -hmm. Today's reading is from Matthews 14, verses 22 to 23. It's following where Jesus has just fed the 5,000 and they're all rather tired. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side where he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up onto a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. 
During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink and cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hazel, thank you so much. Let's pray. Father, as uh, we talk this, about this passage, Lord, this day, Father, may we look to you and trust in your unfailing love for us, to your praise and your glory. Amen. The passage, I'm sure, is a very well-known one. And as always, we need to place it in context. And as Hazel correctly said, the journey of the disciples across the lake comes after the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus sent his disciples off ahead of himself while he organized the crowd dispersal. I'm going to refer to uh, two points in today's passage. I believe there are three subtly different uses of the word immediately in today's passage and more on that point shortly. The second point explores what happened when Peter responded to the Lord's command to come, and I'll share that a little later. But first, those three subtle different uses of the word immediately. In today's passage, firstly, it means quickly. Secondly, it means to act straight away. And thirdly, it means to not waste time. And I mentioned how important it is to place the story in context when understanding the Bible and how this is refers to the feeding of the 5,000. Verse 22 says in today's reading, immediately, immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. Why did Jesus do that? Here, immediately means quickly. John 6 verse 15 tells us, because of the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000, they were about to seize Jesus and make him king by force. Mindful of the people's response, Jesus acts and instructs the disciples, made the disciples, verse 22, get into the boat and go. Natasha, can we have our first slide, please? Thank you. Go. The Great Commission, yes. But it's not really talked like that in this passage we're talking about here. But as disciples of Christ, we need to be attentive to the Lord's instructions and his directions and immediately respond when he tells us. I'm sure many folks can attest to the Lord telling them to respond quickly, without delay. Sometimes, though, we may not know what to say or do. But the good news is that the Lord does know, always. Sarah, our minister, said on Sunday, we may not know where to start when our knotting the metaphorical knots in our lives. But the Spirit does. Not sure how to go about hearing God's voice? Dwell in his word. Dwelling in God's word then allows us what Chuck Swindoll calls listening with retuned ears to occur. 
Our responses become increasingly quicker, more automatic. We can respond more readily to the Lord's commands for us. The second use of immediately comes in verse 27. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Here, immediately means act straight away. We can so easily forget what the Lord has done when fear grips us. The disciples, Mark tells us, were utterly astounded for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened, Mark 6, 51 to 52. And if we can have the second slide, please, Natasha. I will remember the works of the Lord, says the psalmist in Psalm 77, 11. When Satan prowls, when fears and doubts strike, act straight away and go to the scripture. Go to prayer. Go to him. Immerse yourself in the truths of what the Lord has done. Remember his promises, his works, his truths. Jesus said three times, it is written when he was tested in the wilderness. Matthew chapter 4 verses 4, verses 7 and verses 10. I encourage us to read God's word immediately straight away go to God's word it is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path the third use of immediately comes in verse 31 Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him saying to him "O oh, Hugh of little faith why do you doubt here immediately means not wasting any time. And can we have the next slide, please, Natasha? We can dilly dally, can't we? <laughs> we know what to do, but we don't do it and we waste time. Here, Jesus knows what to do and does so without wasting any time. So, without wasting any time, I'll say this. Don't waste time allowing things, thoughts and worries to fester. The Lord is reaching out his hand. Grab and hold on to the Lord's hand. Don't grab and hold on to the worries. The second point of today's talk, perhaps you may be more familiar with. It refers to the initial decision of Peter to get out of the boat and walk towards Jesus. John Ortleb's bestseller book, If You Want to Walk on the Water, You've Got to Get Out of the Boat, epitomises our need to obey his command to come. How we need to trust in the Lord that we will be okay and to continue to trust him in that walk, wherever and on whatever that walk takes us. Quoting Ortberg, he says, Only Peter knew the glory of walking on the water. He alone knew what it was to attempt to do what he was not capable of doing on his own. Then feeling the euphoria of being empowered by God to actually do it. To deliberately add further metaphors, Peter had the mountain top experience. And what followed for Peter was the valley experience. Peter did what so many of us do. He took his eyes, his focus off from the Lord and place them firmly and squarely onto the fear. His focus shifted onto the wind and inevitably the ever rising waves. Therefore, he began to sink and he cried out to the Lord. 
Peter, of course, is rescued. Jesus' comment to him is that he is one of little faith. Notice, not no faith. After all, Peter did get out of the boat to walk to Jesus in the first place. So, I am reminded on just how much a little faith can do. Mustard seed? Jesus, however, implies having more faith can do so much more. Peter could have met Jesus on the water rather than being rescued from the water. Is our faith as small as a mustard seed? Do we have just a little faith? Be encouraged. Listen to what the Lord might be calling us to do or say, and that little faith may become a greater faith. Dare, trust God, and get out of the metaphorical boat. Our faith will grow even more. Birds might even perch in our branches. The title of this chapter in the NIV Bible is called Jesus Walks on Water. I wonder if the title could have been Peter Walks on Water. And our next slide, please, Natasha. Where might we walk upon the waters? I wonder if in testimonies in weeks ahead might show where we walked upon the waters. The words of the song Ocean that we'll be singing shortly says, Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Amen. But if, like Peter, our faith and trust in the Lord go a bit awry, <laughs> and we get that sinking feeling, don't let that disappointment define us. Focus on how we respond to that disappointment. Look to the Lord. And when our focus drifts and we start to sink, switch our focus back to the Lord. And our final slide, please, Natasha. Thank you. Remember. Remember, though, if, like Peter, our eyes go astray, the Lord is with us. We, too, can reach out and grab his hand. Amen. Yeah, can you just keep that slide up, Natasha, of the, the last slide here? So yeah, thank you, Stephen. Um, yeah, <coughs> just focus on that picture of the hand. And um, in the really time of quiet, we pray, just close our eyes and, or oh, yeah, no, don't close your eyes, then you can't look at the picture. Um, yeah, just focus on that hand reaching out and imagine it, that's Jesus's hand looking out, um, reaching out to you. So whatever situation we're facing now where we might be walking, walking on the water, but perhaps we're, perhaps we're drowning slightly or perhaps we're uh, um, just a little bit below the water. But, yeah, we thank you that because of our faith and our trust, he will not let go of us. We just need to keep our focus. So, yeah, Heavenly Father, help us to keep that focus on you. Thank you that even the tiniest amount of faith is all we need. And that thank you that our faith in you gives us the ability to do amazing things like Peter did, even walking on water. So help us in this coming week to keep our eyes on you rather than looking at our situation and looking down and starting to sink. So yeah, thank you, Stephen, for sharing that with us this evening, this, uh, this morning. Strong words to um, keep us going throughout that week. And as, as Stephen quoted those words from that song about walking on water, um, where our feet will we'll walk, we'll um, sing that song now and, and another one as Gary leads us in worship.
Trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the water wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. And I will call upon your name. Eyes above the waves, where no oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I am yours, you are mine. Waiting here for you. Waiting here for you. You're the Lord of our creation. Still, you know my heart. You're the author of salvation. Loved us from the start. Waiting here for you. 
thy hands lifted high in praise and it's you we adore singing hallelujah waiting here for you You are everything you promised. Our faithfulness is true. And we're desperate for your presence. All we need is you. We didn't hear for you. <coughs> With our hands lifted high. We adore singing hallelujah. We're singing hallelujah. We're singing hallelujah. We didn't hear for you. The hands lifted high in praise, and it's you we adore, singing hallelujah. We're singing hallelujah. We're singing hallelujah. singing hallelujah we didn't hear for you with our hands lifted high in praise and it's you we adore singing hallelujah. We didn't hear for you. Thank you, Gary. Beautiful time of worship. <clears throat> As we go into a new week, I pray that we'll all keep our focus on God, remembering the St Stephen's words that he shared with us this morning, that we'll all keep our focus on God, trusting him for all our needs, surrendering to, surrendering to his transforming presence and his eternal love. And remembering not to dilly-dally either. I'm, um, my husband would say I'm one of the greatest baffers. <laughs> but yeah, when it comes to working for God's kingdom and to be disciples, uh, making disciples of all men, then yeah, it's not a time to dilly dally, is it? So let's say together our closing prayer. May God, who clothes the lilies and feeds the birds of the sky, who leads the lambs to pasture and the deer to water, <clears throat> who multiply, multiplied loaves and fishes and changed water into wine. Lead us, feed us, multiply us, and change us to reflect the glory of our Creator, now and through all eternity. Amen. Amen. 
So thank you all for joining us this morning again. And um, we've now got time for um, breakout.